Okay, today we're going to talk about what's involved in the calibration, repair, and a little bit of description of what goes on inside of the police radar. This is a Z15 radar. As you can see, it's picking up a speed of 54 mile an hour from our test bench. And we have uh, the actual radar is comprised of the microwave assembly which sends and receives the uh, signal for the radar. It's actually, this one is at K-band, so it's 24.150 gigahertz. Now keep in mind your cell phone operates at about two gigahertz. So we're 10, 10, 15 times higher than your cell phone in this range for the radar. This radar will send out a signal with this cone focusing the beam at about a 15 degree beam width to a car and it can be a half a mile away and what's reflected back from that car which is very small is mixed back with the signal that left and due to the Doppler effect is a slightly different frequency depending on the speed of the vehicle because the reflected wave of off of a moving object shifts in frequency so it's the radar's job to figure out what that shift is and translate it to a speed. So we got the microwave assembly here. There's a transmitter underneath. Right here is a power supply and preamp board. And uh, underneath of that is a logic board that actually generates some of the voltages necessary for the radar and also processes the signals to, uh, to get the fastest car and also uh, the strongest car. <coughs> so uh, this is the display board here. So the signals that come up out of the logic board are interpreted and actually it is, uh, a, um, a speed is generated on the display which represents the Doppler shift of a 55 mile an hour car. So we're actually simulating that 55 mile an hour car here on our bench without actually having to go out on the road. This helps us to be able to work on the radar to determine if it's reading accurately and has good range and everything just by using this test bench. If uh, we have uh, three signal generators up here and um, those generators are for target speed, fastest speed, and patrol speed. So we have a, a, a thing here where we can change from X and K A band to X, uh, K and K A band to X band. Well, that we move over to this X band microwave when we go to X band. But if we're on K or K A, we use this microwave. So <laughs> actually, I can carry this signal generator. There is a signal generator there that uh, so we can I can vary this signal generator and make this radar read any speed so I can look and see by varying the generator if the radar is tracking with the speed correctly so I'm generating a 102 mile an hour signal and the radar is reading right at 101 102 So we go back down. Back to our standard 55, which is typically what we use to uh, work on the radar. We put a typical speed in and then we try to figure out why the radar is working or not working. Typically we got a problem in the microwave if we're not getting any signal at all if the radar goes to a test, which I can do here. See, it gives all eights and a 32 for the test on this radar. So if the test works and it's not picking up speeds, then we work on this microwave. This microwave is about a $500 item from the factory. So we are able to repair it for under $200 rather than buying a brand new one. So we save a lot of money on the repairs of these radars by not having to run back to the factory every time we have something, we replace the part that's bad, not just throw a whole new assembly in. 
throwing a whole new assembly in is pretty expensive when you look at the fact that these radars are only about $1,200 to start with. So this is one of the older ones. This is made by MPH. It's a Z15. And we have an oscilloscope over here that shows us the waveform that we're, that we're sending in. Shows us the waveform that we're sending. And we're able to go in and repair this radar. Probably this radar would be about a $200 repair counting labor and the parts and recalibration and everything else. So it's important to recertify the radar to make sure that everything is reading accurately when you get done working on it because you're disassembling it down, you're replacing parts in there. You want to put it back together and make sure the radar is accurate before we ship it back to the customer. So we include the certification in on the repair of the radar. We don't charge extra for it because we basically had to certify it to get it repaired so we don't actually turn around and, and charge someone for a calibration certificate. So our typical repairs, uh, you know, looking at around 95 labor and about 45 for a recalibration. Uh, I can adjust the, uh, on the Z15, I can adjust the audio low, here get weaker, or higher. And then the range. This is on a range of eight. And then far nine is the maximum range on this radar. And then we get down to a range of one or two. What that means is the radar is not going to pick up unless you have a really strong target. If you got to turn down that low. There's really no reason to not run the radar, just go ahead and run it on maximum range all the time. If you're getting a lot of ghost readings, then you may want to run the range down, just so you don't see the fan or something like that. If you're still able to get enough range on the targets that you're looking for, it can eliminate a lot of ghosting on the radar and stuff, because it's at maximum range, it's looking for anything whatsoever moving out there. And that could be the fan in your car uh, generating a speed. Or it could be vibration of power lines or something like that. So we're wanting to make sure that we uh, only read cars. So we, sometimes we'll reduce the range for that reason. Now if I squeeze this trigger and let go, it locked in the 54. Notice that we're not sending out a signal anymore to defeat radar detectors. That 54 is locked in and flashing. If I think the guy's going faster, I'll squeeze it again and lock it in again. Let me just run this up a little faster so you see what I'm talking about. I'm actually generating a little faster speed. So I re-locked in at 59. So that's a real good feature to be able to do that because you're not putting out any signal to defeat radar detectors at this point when you're in the lock mode. Squeeze the trigger, you're putting out a signal let go, you're not putting out a signal, and you've locked the radar in. Now even though we've used the Z15 in this demonstration, many of the other radars are similar and all of them use the same general theory of operation. Uh, transmit a signal, pick that reflected signal back up, compare it with the transmitted signal, get the Doppler shift, run it through a logic board to determine the speed, and then display it on a display.